What's going on, y'all? My name is Jay Sizz. I'm from Behind the Buzz. And today we have a very special headliner for this session. She is an entrepreneur, designer, and artist. Today we have the head of Bum Swag Millionaire, ladies and gentlemen, Carla Styles. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you for having me. So to start us off, I'm looking at some of the clothes, even the outfit that you have on right now. We'll get into that. But it just screams DC when they talk about, you know, the style, the... The, the flamboyance of everything. Um, so what side, what part of DC are you from and how would you describe um, the culture and how it impacts your clothes? I'm from Southeast DC and the culture of DC impacts my clothes by, um, I like to create things that are bold and stand out and anywhere you go all over the world, you can tell a DC person from the regular people who live in that area just because DC has a different style and flavor and a flamboyancy that, you know, stand out against the crowd. Right, right. So what part of DC culture is um, has influenced your creativity? Has it been just the way of life, you know, the art? There's a lot of museums and things. Um, so what part of it specifically can you take from uh, the culture that you've implanted? For me, it's the way of life. I'm literally like inspired by anything. I could just go outside and like see somebody doing a particular thing. I'm like, oh, I can turn that into a piece of art or those colors that person got on, I can use that for a colorway for my next drop or something like that. So it's just really the way of life. And you just bold, like even with the outfit that you got on and I see the, the tattoos and stuff, like you just scream like artists, like it really does. Um, so let's get into Bum Swag Millionaire. Uh, so how did this manifest itself? What started it out? It really is a manifestation because when I was in the 11th grade, I started developing my own style, you know, like I come from a family of nine siblings and mm. my mother, you know, she was the sole provider. So we would usually just weigh each other hand-me-downs and stuff like that. So I would take my sister hand-me-downs that she gave me and I would recreate it or revamp it by drawing on it, painting on it, bleaching it. Yeah. So yeah, back in 11th grade, um, yes, I used to wear my sister hand-me-downs and stuff like that. And then when I started, you know, getting my own money, I would buy the cheapest thing that I could make look fly. And my family will always be like, you look like a bum. And I was like, yeah, that's my swag. So I went with Bum Swag Millionaire. So I always knew back at a young age, I always wanted my own brand that I can, you know, create sustainable things and revamp it and put my own style to it. So that's how I created Bum Swag Millionaire. And you know that, like, coming from this area in the DMV, especially in D.C., you know, Southeast, we are some tough critics. Yeah. So it's got to take some goal, like, you got to have some type of grit to go against the grain like that and kind of pave your own way. Yeah, So sure. who, have you ever seen anybody, you know, say, like, where she got on, like, you know, give you some pushback? My on whole you? life, I got that my whole life. They will be like, where you from? You not from here? I'm like... I live on the corner. Right. I'm like walking down Minnesota Avenue, Minnow Road. It's like, you from here? I'm like, yes, I live up the street. So people will always be like, you are weird. You are different. But that's what makes me me, it makes me stand out. And I don't, I'm a type of person that I like to stand on my own. So I like to create things that's going to stand out. And I don't really like to fit in because I'm not made to fit in. Exactly. I, yeah. I, I can definitely see that. So, like, has there ever been any discouragement, like, where it's like, you know, you're trying to pave your own way, or maybe you're starting to see who you want to be, but, you know, part of you wants to fit in at yeah. some point? Oh, yeah, that's definitely, um, I, did, I still deal with that a lot, because I create things that actually scare people to wear. So, you got to be bold, or you got to feel like, I'm not like everybody else, so I could rock this too, you know? and not be threatened by stuff that that is bold and stand out and that's not like what everyone else is creating but yeah i do i deal with um you know making sure i create enough to fit in per se not fit in per se but for someone to connect to right enough people to connect to that feels like how i feel that don't mind standing out so yeah i still um work on feelings of like putting myself out there and being rejected but i've learned like when you put yourself out there there is going to be people that reject you but those are the people that's not supposed to vibe with you you know right right you yeah. got to have your own click your own circle you found yeah. that 
you know, you got clients now. I think I saw something you were uh, DMV under 35, like yeah. crazy accomplishments. So now people are coming to you for the swag because you kind of set the trend. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? So, but I don't think we really got into like the creation of Bum Swag Millionaire. Like, so when did this start? When did the business start? I started Bum Swag Millionaire in 2019. Okay. And my first drop was, um, it actually was um, button up shirts because I like to create things that are, you could dress it up, you could dress it down, you can swag it, you can wear it to work, you can wear it anywhere, but still have some type of um, formalness to it still. Mm -hmm. So my first drop was hand painted button ups and I did like um, one on one button ups that I painted and they went really good. So I was like, OK, it gave me the confidence to keep going with my brand, even though it is not what this area is used to right yeah so would you say that it's been successful so far like have you yeah it's been i'm going to say it's been pre uh pretty successful i'm still in the process of growing and learning things on the business side because the creative side that's the easy part the business side is the part i'm still working on you know being able to handle the numbers and all the important stuff that artists and creatives don't really care to think about but it's an important part of business i i feel that definitely yeah. like we, we're scared of that we just want to jump in and create things but it's like oh you got to do some math and you got to worry about you know your clients and all that other stuff so yeah. i feel that um so let's let's move back to like childhood so what type of child were you or adolescent um you know growing up like how would you describe yourself i would describe myself as the quiet observant child like I said, I'm um, one of nine and I'm in the middle, I'm the fourth. So I felt most of my childhood, I felt overlooked because it was like, my mother don't have time to focus on the ones who are old enough to, you know, handle their stuff. because She still was, you know, being a mom every year, a new mom every year. So I felt like I had to, you know, take care of myself in a way. Okay, okay. So. You said you feel like you had to take care of yourself. What's your relationship with your nine siblings? Um, was it tough in that type of household? And, you know, especially, you know, in D.C., you know, houses are not as big. So you're living in, you know, close quarters with everyone. So how is that environment? How has that shaped you? That has shaped me to, to be a person who's able to handle the noise and still focus on, like, what's important to me. Because... Um, Imagine being in a house with nine people, nine kids and one mom who's probably losing her mind for real, for real, because my mother was a young mother when she had us all. But imagine being a person that's quiet and reserved and everybody else got their own thing going on. It's just a bunch of noise, a bunch of riffraff and a bunch of really just noise, it's mm. just constant noise. So how much respect do you have for your mother for being able to, like, what is she to you for her to, it sounds like a real strong woman to, to deal with all of yes. that. Yes. Um, my mother is very important to me and I give her so much credit, like being older and being able to be like, wow, like my mother had nine kids and at one point we were all in a one bedroom, no, two bedroom apartment, mm -hmm. nine of us in two bedroom apartment. And I always be asking my mother, like, how did you not lose your mind? How were you not on drugs? How did you not do something to cope with the stress of raising nine kids alone? Right. So I praise her a lot for that. How has she kept you away from taking that route and the other siblings that you had? Because oftentimes, how old are you? 32. I, I would have never guessed that. So yeah. that, that's breaking news <laughs> Man, to me. Man, I'd be forgetting because I still feel so youthful and young. I'd be like, how old am I again? Yeah, like, yeah, she's probably like, what, 23 or something? No. Like nah. nah, nah. But, you know, how did she stare you away from, you know, getting into, you know, trouble, you know, in Southeast D.C.? Because it's um, easy. Yeah, sorry to cut you off. Honestly, it was a personal choice. Really? Because my siblings are completely different from me. Like, I have... Two brothers that are constantly, um, not constantly, but currently arrested. And I have one that just got released. Um, out of us nine, it is five boys. Three of the boys have been shot before. And it's just like a personal choice because I always wanted better for myself. And I always, you know, saw my environment and be like, this is not the life I want for me. Right. So I've always been a driven person or a person that would, you know, take my own path and not feel like I need to fit in or feel like 
pressure to do what everyone else is around around me is doing. Well, I commend you for that because I you. think a lot of kids, you know, especially in this area, we hear every day, you know, somebody's, you know, a victim to gun violence, yeah. you know, they're stealing cars and stuff like that. Um, so I see you as a kind of a, a leader in some way, for sure. you know. So yeah. what's your message to some of your viewers that may be looking to this who may not know this background? Because I think this is very like I, I, you don't know that off looking in your Instagram, yeah. you know, your backstory. So coming from that background, what's your message to people who um, might find themselves in a similar situation? Um, my message to people who will be in this, who could be in a sim similar situation as me, is to keep going. You know, follow your own path, believe in yourself, and don't allow your outside circumstances to make you feel like you don't measure up enough or you're not capable of being whatever you desire to be. Right. Okay. So moving back to the art, we talked about your childhood. Um, so you you have many different hats. You know, you're graphic designing, you're doing clothes, you're doing murals. So what came first um, and how did you get in, in your niche? Um, what came first was, actually, honestly, what came first was me wanting to be a graphic designer in high school. I uh, did internships at Howard, internships at, um, it was a, nonprofit called Metro Teen Aids. I did like graphic work there. That's why I first started like knowing that I wanted to be a graphic designer. But um, I ended up graduating from school with our walls and then I went to Art Institute only for like a couple of months because I couldn't really afford it. So I just stopped going because mm -hmm. I was like, I can't manage these payments. So um, after that, that was um, 2011. After that, I didn't do anything for the next four years, but just work like um, really? regular jobs. Yeah. And then 2015, I started painting. I didn't know how to paint or I didn't think I knew how to paint. Right. And so I just started from there and the painting came first. And then I just constantly painted all the time because I quit my job in 2015. Both me and my wife became entrepreneurs. And so we just had an I just had an abundance of time to just really focus on painting. That's amazing because, you know, that's a big step. I feel like for a lot of us creators, we're forced to work some job that we hate going yeah. to every day. And it drains you because you don't have the time to do what you're really passionate about. Yeah. And um, I know this interview isn't about me, but I find myself in the same lane. Like, I want to do this for the rest of my life. But I know that is this a realistic goal? So how did you get to the point where you're like, I'm not doing this. I'm going to try to take a leap of faith and I'm going to do what I love to do. Man, I take leaps of faith every day <laughs> um, because I always been a person that's not willing to do something that's not making me happy. So I put my art first and my creation first. And luckily I have a wife that has my back and support me. And she's like, do what you need to do, figure out what you want to figure out. I got your back. And so that type of encouragement makes me go harder because it's like, I got somebody backing me. I can't let me down. I can't let her down. So it keeps me focused and passionate. So you mentioned your wife and we seen something on your page said over eight years. Eight years is a long time and it is Pride Month. So I think I would be, um, it wouldn't be good if I didn't touch on this subject. So with it being Pride Month, how did you discover like who you were and to make the commitment to um, marrying your wife now? Yeah. Um, me and my wife, we met when we were 19 years old. Mm -hmm. And we met on a Wednesday and we went together on a Friday. Really? Yes. <laughs> so we've been together ever since. And um, so that's been since 2011. We'll be coming up on 13 years this October. And um, what was the question again? <laughs> so how did you discover, you know, that that's the lane that you wanted to take as far as your sexuality? Oh, and, uh, I mean. Or how long is you like, because I know sometimes, you know, people are unsure, especially at a yeah, young age. Yeah, definitely. At, at a young age, I definitely was unsure, but I always had the feelings. I could remember back to probably like kindergarten, you know, having a crush on the girl in the class, but she's like, mm, that don't sound right or right. seem right. But yeah, um. Yeah, I always knew, I always had like friends that I talked to that were girls, but no one knew. And um, this is so funny because I always talk to my best friend. She'll uh, 
we were in 11th grade and this girl came to school and was like, your best friend is gay. <laughs> and I was like, she called me and told me exactly what she said. And I'm like, she's lying. And I'm like, oh shit, somebody done found out. Mm -hmm. But um, beyond that, I always knew. And then once I got out of high school, I was more comfortable with being myself. I didn't feel the fear of being judged by my parents because my mother is like the most open and accepting person. I have a I have an older gay sister and a younger gay brother. But honestly, I just I just feel comfortable in being myself, being in choosing my wife as my sexuality and as my partner. And I am a person that don't put a title on my sexuality or let my sexuality be my my personality or my identity. So I don't go around praising, oh I'm gay, I'm this, I'm that. I put no title on myself and my wife is the same way and we just live in loving each other. That's that's great. That's really is. Um, so in DC, you know, we had the the Pride Month parade and everything. Um, I unfortunately we couldn't go, but we were planning on going out there to do some coverage and do some interviews. Um, did you attend the event? No. Have you ever gone to one? Once. Once? Yes. What's the what's the importance and what's the vibe of, you know, that event going on in your city? I feel like the importance is just having someone to relate to if you're struggling with your own sexuality, you know? Like, that is a place where people go and, like, I can see people like me, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um. So were there any, like, struggles as far as, you know, dealing with who you were and, you know, finding or maybe accepting, you know, what your desires were? Um, um, as far as struggling, no, I think it was something I always knew and that I was always comfortable with myself. You know, like the funny, the, it's a funny thing I used to do when I was young. You know how you'll ball up some paper and shoot in the trash can? Right. Like, if I miss, I'm gay. Right. And I used to do that all the time and I'm like, oh, shit, if I miss, and I'm like, oh well. I guess it is. Yeah, I'm like, I guess it is what it is. But, um, when I did... When I did, like, finally, it was never really a coming out thing. When I did let people know, like, oh, this is my girlfriend. You know, it's, it would be, like, people first time, like, knowing. But, like, mm, always knew you was a something. Right. You know, but, and I think that's a funny part. Like, people that, that aren't comfortable with coming out of the closet or hiding themselves or telling someone who they are. I'm like, man, you in the closet, but the door is clear. You can clearly yeah. tell who's, mm -hmm. like, who's gay or who's weird. And it's just because of... They're trying. They're holding so tight to their sexuality, right. but it's just like we all can tell. <laughs> we it's, all can tell. You're not we all can tell. You're not fooling nobody. Oh my gosh! So let's move back to the art. So, what is the most? Um, what's the what's your most uh, popular piece of art that you created, or the one that you value the most? Um, I would say my most valuable piece of art would be the painting I did for the Dr. Martin store. I love that piece because it represents DC to the core and it was one of my favorite brands. I only used to wear these shoes every day to school, mm -hmm. leopard, bright pink. Just, it was just my favorite brand. I always would want to like work with a brand like that. And once they reached out to me, I couldn't believe it. And I was like, for this piece, I have to do my very best on Like, I got to, you know, make sure it's perfect or close to perfect. So that's my favorite piece for sure. Right. So we've seen you. You mentioned your murals um, and your different art pieces. How long does it take to put one of these things, these huge art pieces on the wall? And a private question, I want to know how much the supplies cost, all oh, the paint yeah, sure. and everything. Um. Honestly, for me, uh, I would say I would consider myself a fast worker. It depends like what I'm working on. I don't like to spill my secret on how fast I can get things done because I don't want my clients to be like, once they book me, be like, you got that You got that done next week? And I'm like, I really get it done in the day, but I got stuff prior right, right. to do. So yeah, um, to do a mural on a wall, say such as... Look at the, uh, the backdrop, maybe. Like the backdrop? Um, probably about two or three days, depending like on how many hours I work. Like um, my most recent mural I did at, um, dang, what's the name? Automatic DC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one, um, the work hours were from five to nine. 
and I would come at five and leave at nine. It took me about three days. So about okay. 15, anywhere from 12 to 15 hours. Gotcha. Where can we find some of your art pieces? You know, and you mentioned two stores. Are there any other places that? Um, not right now because I don't have anything on display, but I am working on an upcoming show, my first solo show. So you guys can stay on tune for that. Okay. All right. So let's play this game. We're going to call it Yay or Nay. Okay. Behind the Buzz edition. So I'm going to name something. They're all going to be based on DC lifestyle because we got Miss okay. DC herself. You're going to tell me yay or nay. Okay. And if you have an opinion towards it, a strong opinion, please do share and stop right. me with it. All right? So first, mumbo sauce. Yay. Carry out. Yay. Museums. Yay. DMV rappers. Uh, honestly, no disrespect, nay. Why? Um, honestly, I don't, I'm an R&B girl. Like, I like soulful things. I like stuff I can sing and be lovey-dovey about. So I don't really listen to the, what, what do they call it? Trap, DMV yeah, rap. Yeah, trap. Or... I don't listen to that type of stuff, but I do like Shy Glizzy. So that's one uh, DC artist I could say I definitely listen to. Okay. All right. DMV or DC nightclubs. Um, at this point in my life, nay. Uh, Don Julio, the drink of the summer. Nay. What's your what's your what's your drink or goes to? Uh, I'm a I'm a wine girl. Wine uh, girl. Yeah. Okay. Wine or rum. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. New Balance. Yeah. And go go music. Uh yeah. What's your favorite go go band? I don't have one. You don't have one. No, I don't. I didn't honestly. I didn't grow up listening to go go. It's funny because. Nobody in my family actually listened to go go. It's crazy. We from Southeast, of course. It sounds weird and crazy, but I, like I said, I'm an R&B girl. My mother used to play all the oldies and goodies. So you never listened to the the remix the go go's like you know they did one with uh, I think the Backyard Band had to. Yeah, I listened to go go, and I become accustomed to go go because my wife's her her biological dad is a go go legend. So me, meeting her. Her dad is rapper dude from what's his original band? What band? Okay. Yeah. So, um, let's touch on the DMV under thirty-five, right? So you were selected. That's like a huge honor to have. Um, what does that mean to you, and what do you hope to accomplish in the future? That means so much to me. It means that people. The people have my back and people mention me in spaces that I'm not there to speak up for myself. So I'm really grateful that people consider me someone who should be on a list of any list. So I'm grateful for the opportunity and I'm grateful people consider me to be one of the greats from DC, which is an honor. And you heard that? She said she is one of the greats from DC. Yeah, which is an honor because. You know, as an artist and creative, we all still have our struggles and we all deal with self-doubt and not feeling good enough or not feeling like we're doing the right thing or making the right moves. But someone is seeing you, someone is feeling you, someone is loving and appreciate what you're doing. So I'm grateful for that. Excellent. So before we head out, what's next for Bum Swag Millionaires? What's more, what's next for Bum Swag Millionaires? Definitely more swag, more... Um, more manufactured pieces because I'm really like focusing on my art. So most of all Bum Swag Millionaire is handmade. I make it in my, myself in the house. But this is my first manufactured piece. I still press myself, but I got the shirts cut and the tagging done. And so we're gonna be doing more manufactured pieces and what's more, what's next for myself, Carla Styles, as the artist, more art shows, more art, just more creative things that Whatever pop in my mind, I'll bring to life. All right. Um, who else would you like to see in this chair getting interviewed? If you can shout somebody out that you think would be a good person to talk to. My wife. She's wife? the wisest person I know. She's one of the most creative people I know. And I think she, she has a gift of inspiring people and speaking life into people. So I feel like she will be good to um, interview. Her name is diamond and her instagram is nappy x happy all right all right and what did you enjoy most about your time here with us today it was a good conversation on our end but what did you enjoy about us? um i enjoy how you guys ask um ask questions and how comfortable you made me feel here 
All right, yeah, we love it. With that being said, thank you, Carla Styles, for your time, and be sure to follow her and Behind the Buzz on Instagram. And as always, continue to be, be your, your buzz. buzz.